Alright, welcome to this episode of my playthrough of Armored Core 4 Answer. Uh, we are on the uh, League Path, as it's so called, um, which in my playthrough I'm showing as Paths A, B, and C. Um, we have just defeated the Arms Fort, Spirit of Motherwell, which is, um, I would say, probably the third hardest uh, fight in the game. And they put it at the end of Chapter 1, of course. Ah... Uh, from Software has never been known for being easy in their games. Um, so we're now in Chapter 2. Uh, we are proceeding with the missions uh, in the League Path. Uh, let's, let's go ahead. Alright, so uh, the next mission we're going to take is to eliminate Procyon. Or Procyon. I'm not entirely sure how you say that. Pays out 400,000 credits, and our client is Taurus. Let's take a look at the briefing. Here is the mission. You are to destroy the large-scale Procyon energy cannons. They are deployed within the gear tunnel. The Procyon is a decommissioned weapon originally manufactured by Omer. Even so, it can still deliver a powerful punch. Don't approach them head-on. The gear tunnel is actually a web of large tunnels. You'll need to use the environment to find safe positions from which to attack and destroy the enemy targets. That's the mission. Taurus requested you personally for this mission. Don't let us down. All right. Well, seems like seems pretty straightforward, but with a little bit of a twist in that we have to um, find the best path of attack while uh, under fire from these heavy hitting cannons. Let's go. Commence mission. Eliminate all Procyon energy cannons. So this is my second attempt at this mission. A um, couple things I've learned. Wow, those Procyon cannons definitely do pack a punch. Uh, so you definitely don't want to approach them from head on. You want to approach from the blind spot, just like uh, the mission briefings recommended. Uh, second, um, on the radar up in the top right, uh, the Procyon cannons are the red dots and the defense force are the white dots. These normals that are coming after me, um, you don't want to let them get close because they are equipped with laser swords, uh, and laser swords do a lot of damage. So uh, letting them get to you with that is uh, is generally inadvisable. Uh, secondly, some of the defense force uh, is just stationary cannons like that. Uh, you generally don't want to be just approaching them straightforward either. like a, uh, a swarm of missiles down a tunnel to uh, take care of your enemies. So yeah, that's the other thing I learned is that there's some Procyon cannons just right there waiting to attack you. As you can hear. Yeah, that was just a normal cannon. Uh, so we want to go this way so we don't get blown to smithereens. All right. 
Alright, so we know there's cannons in the tunnel there, but knowing that the uh, the red dots on the radar are um, the Procyon cannons, if we go this way, well, we're still in front of the Procyon cannons, uh, and we're going to have less time to dodge. So we, uh, we don't want to go this way. There, you can kind of see them at the end of the tunnel there. Just kind of sitting at the top of that hill. Uh, so, instead of going this way and just charging to our death, we want to keep going around. So, defense force eliminated. Let's take out the Procyon cannon. Confirmed. Half the targets have been destroyed. Oh, looks like there's another Procyon cannon there. There we go. And there's more defense force over here. There's a cannon. So now we know that. Fortunately, one shot from the rail cannon seems to do a good job of taking care of like the normal cannons. Seemed a little close. No more white dots ahead, but I do see a second entry of red dots. And obviously, the lack of white dots does not mean that there is no danger. There is obviously a whole new defense force here. Looks like my rail cannon is my best friend in this particular mission. What with the whole long tunnels. Got rid of them before they got too close with their laser swords. Looks like I see more defense force over here. Well, they disappeared from my uh, my radar pretty quickly. The fact that we've got branching tunnels means I've probably got a, bro a, a Procyon cannon coming up this way. So let's be quick and then dodge appropriately. Yep, Procyon cannon's up there. Lovely. So we're probably going to want to go this way to get around behind them.
Now the question is, is that Defense Force or is that a Procyon Cannon? Red Dot would tend to lean towards Procyon Cannon. There's White Dot's over there. Yeah, Procyon Cannon, there we are. Only a few targets remaining. Targets destroyed. Mission complete. Rank A could have been better. Uh, spent a lot on ammo. Probably could have relied on my rail cannon a little bit more. But uh, I also ended the mission with only two ammo left in the rail cannon. So, I'll take it. Rank A is good. Alright, so the next mission we're going to take is to escape the naval port of Mimir. Here's the mission. Your objective is to escort the flagship Titan as it escapes from the Mimir naval port. Mimir's eroded coastline makes it a natural stronghold. However, it has fallen within range of the GA America artillery. For this mission, we want you to escort the Titan safely out of the harbor. You must destroy all GA America vessels that attempt to intercept. You can expect the enemy to cloak themselves with ECM. Proceed with caution. The Union is offering bonuses for all Titan escort vessels that escape, provided the Titan herself is also protected. This concludes the briefing. This is a very important mission for the Union. If you succeed, you can expect a lot more attention. We look forward to a favorable reply. So, this one seems like uh, like an escort mission. Well, it is an escort mission um, out of the port of Mimir. Uh, now, this one, one of the um, one of the settings you remember with like boosters and everything, you can use them to kind of get a boost of speed. Um, there is a setting in this game called auto boost, where if you're on water, the game the game will just automatically run your boosters to keep you above the water, so you don't sink and get a game over. Uh, very useful. I do have that turned on, so that's what you're going to see. Uh, the other thing about cloaking themselves with ECM, that is electronic countermeasure. That's what that stands for, in case you didn't know. You may have noticed ECM 0, 0.0 or something like that up in the radar. That's what that's referring to. Uh, so let's defend the flagship Titan uh, as it leaves the port of Mimir um, and is under attack from GA America. Commence mission. Escort the Titan to the edge of the combat zone. So these are the ships that I am escorting. The Titan is getting underway. Now obviously I've played this mission before. There is nothing requiring you to stay with the Titan. You can go ahead and just clear out the enemies in advance of it getting there. Which basically makes the whole thing a lot easier. Obviously you can see these docks along these the edges of the water. If I was not using the, um, the profile that gives me unlimited energy uh, for things like boosters, 
you would have to recharge your energy levels on these docks periodically. Uh, but I am using the one that gives me unlimited energy for boosting because, hey, that's a lot more fun and it means I'm not, like, sitting and waiting for my energy to recharge. So, let's stay with that. Now, sometimes they're tricky and they're in these little docks here. And so as the Titan just kind of sails past, they just attack it. Enemy units have deployed ECM over the entire combat zone. Our intel was correct. Stay sharp. I like how surprised she sounds that our intel was correct. Alright, there's the ship. It's coming this way. So let's get ahead of it and take out the next enemy. As you can see up in the radar, it says ECM 100. Which does mean I can't see when there's enemy. Oh, there's an enemy a little bit ahead. So, some uh, of your components and systems have an, of an e ECM, or ECCM, pardon me, Electronic Counter Countermeasure. So basically, even if your enemy uses Electronic Countermeasures, you have countermeasures against their countermeasures. Or, like, a resistance to their countermeasure, at the very least. Not insignificant portion of of at this point is since we have ECM 100, uh, which means I can't see anything on the radar. Is just following where the bullets are coming from. Uh, I want to make sure the Titan is coming this way. Okay, there it is. It is coming past that harbor where they were hiding. So it's going to get here and it's going to be safe because I've cleared out these enemies. That's good. Oh, lovely, they've sent battleships. If I could look straight, that'd be great. Confirmed all targets destroyed. Mission complete. That mission was pretty boring. Next time we'll sign up for an assault job, okay? Sure. Boring. That's that's the word we're going to use for going up against four battleships at the end of, uh, of an escort mission. Rank B? Eh, could be better. I took a fair amount of damage up against those battleships, but I'll take it. Alright, well the next mission we're going to undertake is to uh, defeat the Unknown Next and No Count. So No Count is one of the uh, Link's Nexts, uh, but it looks like there is another Next as well that we also have to defeat. So what I'm going to do first thing is I'm going to go into the uh, AC system. I'm going to switch to my anti-Next design. Because if I'm going up against two Nexts, then I need anti-Next weaponry. Alright. And it looks like it's the Interior Union again. Let's, uh, let's see the mission briefing. This is the mission. You are to target the two Nexts occupying the Kitasaki Junction. The targets in question are a rank 27 reverse legged next called No Count, and a four legged type, Identity Unknown. There are no specific instructions. Strategy in the combat zone is up to you. Just make sure that both nexts are completely destroyed. 
The Union has authorized the use of support nexts. We have prepared a list of candidates. They are highly skilled links. Use them wisely. This ends the briefing. This is a very important mission for the Interior Union. If you succeed, you can expect your stock to rise in the organization. We hope you'll accept. All right, well, it seems pretty straightforward. It's a two-on-one if I choose not to go with a, uh, a, a co-pilot or a two-on-two -two if I do choose to go with a co-pilot. Um, rank 27 isn't that impressive. Um, it means that they're in 27th place. Um, each next has a ranking. Um, with this AC, conf with this next configuration, I've defeated like higher rank next than 27. Uh, the mystery second next is an interesting twist, but uh, should be no problem with this configuration. So, um, my three co-pilots, uh, Windy Fanchon, um, piloting Ryder Palash, but she takes 50% of, uh, of my fee, so that's a no. Um, Lynx Windy, supporting company interior, an experienced, highly successful mercenary, very effective as a support unit. Well, yeah, she's rank three. Of course she is. Uh, My Bliss, Lynx Roy Saland, uh, independent. Collard's highest ranking independent next. Not very trustworthy, but he gets the job done. Uh, Vero Nork with the Lynx A pool, supporting company of the interior union. Uh, uses a support craft ever since the Lynx war. A professional at operating AS missiles. Um, Collard rank 20. Uh, and my bliss and Vero Nork take uh, 30 and 15% of my fee, respectively. But I'm going to go with Solo because I want my fee. Commence mission. Eradicate the enemy next, namely No Count and another unidentified four legged craft. We don't know what tactics they'll use. Exercise caution. Where's my support? This isn't what we discussed. You're, you're kidding, right? It, this is a dream, somebody... Confirmed. Next no-count has been destroyed. And that's the power of Kojima missiles. As long as there's no missile countermeasure, because that's one of the things you can have in this game is like a flare um, that you know intercepts missiles, or sometimes you can have a craft which is very effective at dodging missiles. Confirmed. All targets destroyed. Mission complete. Irregulars. What the hell are they doing here? You need some deep pockets if you want to deploy Nexus on the field. All right, rank A. Not bad, could be better, could be worse. Um, now, you may have a, can some confusion about the, uh, the use of the word irregular there. Um, an irregular is simply a Lynx piloting a Next who is not affiliated with the um, the Mercenary League um, in the game in particular. So in this game, the Mercenary League is Collard. Um, in prior games, it was Raven's Nest because in prior games the uh, the pilots were called Ravens, and in this game they're called Lynx. And uh, ravens were governed by Raven's Nest. Uh, Lynx is um, are governed by Collard. Um, an irregular is simply a, a next pilot or a Lynx who is not affiliated with Collard at all. Which does make it a very interesting question: Why are they here? Who are they? Well, that is where I'm going to call an end to the episode here. Um, so you know the drill. Click over there and join me next time as we continue on the uh, league path.
and I'll see you there. Talk to you later.